Good evening, class. During the American Civil War, the Union's industrialization and economy was at an all-time high as the focus was on the war effort and suppression of the rebellion. However, the South was devastated due to the lack of industrial capabilities and inflation of their economy. Postbellum is Latin for after war, and in the case of the United States, we are specifically referring to the years 1865 to 1900. This period revolved around the reunification, rebuilding, and expansion of our nation, which greatly contributed to the increase in the industrial or manufacturing efforts, agriculture, and the shipment of goods from coast to coast. This period would also include several individuals that would help reshape the United States through their entrepreneurship or innovative thinking. And one such individual that I chose to focus on was George Eastman, the creator of the Kodak Film Company. George Eastman was an American businessman who had several occupations that included working at the Buell and Hayden Insurance Agency and a longtime occupation at the Rochester Savings Bank, where he worked from being a clerk to a second bookkeeper to a first bookkeeper during the latter half of the postbellum period. However, during the 1870s, this was a significant time in Eastman's life as he began a new hobby or passion with the simple purchase of a camera. Now, photography during this period was a very serious undertaking and had several negative aspects to having it really as a hobby. Well, not only was the camera, camera package expensive for the day with a price usually averaging about $49.58, which is about $1,100 or so dollars in today's market, but it also encompassed everything needed for the hobbyist to develop a photo, which includes a soapbox sized camera with tripod, a plate holder with photographic plates, a nitrate and water solution, as well as a dark tent. A lot went into developing film. So Eastman, Eastman described the process by saying, we used the wet collodion process, taking a very clean glass plate and coating it with a thin solution of egg white. This was to make the subsequent emulsion stick. Then we coated the plate with a solution of gun cotton and alcohol mixed with bromide salt. When the emulsion was set, but still moist, the plate was dipped into a solution of nitrate of silver, the sensitizing agent. That had to be done in the dark. The plate, wet and sheltered from the light, was put in the camera. Now you took your picture. Really makes you think about how they took photos back then in comparison to I take out my cell phone today, open the app, and quickly snap the photo within seconds. You can only imagine how much time this took. Now, soon after that comment, he he began experimenting with trying to find a better way. And one of his means of doing so was using a dry plate instead of a wet one and subsequently developed and patented a machine. This is going to be the first of several patents. Um, the machine that applied uniform and cheap coating, uh, and really the coating was or the machine was coupled with the coating that was formed around gelatin or silver bromide solution. Now, as he continued with his hobby, in the 19, or in the 1880s, Eastman, he'd go on to rent a room that he would use to continue experimenting with his passion in the dry plates. He then officially opened the Eastman Dry Plate Company following an issue with one of his employers in which he was passed over for promotion. And it is important to note that during this time, other innovative ideas were produced, such as he worked late nights, so he, he created his own hammock. He developed a new ruby red light globe for the darkroom that he used 
in his room and explored the idea of a film roll holder that he could place on the back of a camera that would take up to 50 pictures and only weighed 2.75 pounds, which really blew the the other plate ideas that were with some of the smaller companies out of the water as they were extremely heavy and had to carry all the plates. Now the company quickly grew and by the age of 30, he actually had employees and he was at able to structure it as a stock company with over $200,000 in capital. George Eastman was an innovator, and through the remainder of the 19th century, he would continue to develop new and creative ideas to make a camera that, as he would put it, any child could use. And though he suffered a few setbacks in the development of products, i.e. developing a camera, he just wasn't happy with it, or the chemicals, realizing that a lot of his pictures were, you know, coming out foggy or blurry, so now he has to travel to England only to find out 40 years down the road that the cows weren't eating enough of the rich mineral, the grass, etc., and therefore it affected the chemical solutions that he was choosing to use. Now, all these setbacks that, you know, he, he initially utilized um, different chemicals and found a better and more manageable means for really society to take and develop their photographs. Fast forward just a couple more years down the road, he would eventually open a store that focused on now eliminating the requirements for the user to develop their own film, but rather his store was quote unquote that one stop shop that included a camera with up to 100 pictures for $25 and a camera roll development for only $10 per roll. So he now created a cheaper camera, so it's now more economically friendly. And once you're finished taking your pictures, you bring it to him and as he would frequently say, you press the button and we do the rest. He would coin that phrase in addition to the name Kodak, as his this company was on Oxford Street in London. It's known that he really just liked the sound of that name, Kodak, and he would call uh, his customers Kodakers. Now, this would be a huge turning point in his life, having this company that would make his name and company really go down history as one of the most successful entrepreneurs in the United States. Eastman continued to develop in inventions within the photography category that would subsequently change society's ability to afford and develop memories. Thank you.